Hey, welcome back, Ben again. Today we're just taking a quick look at how you can count the objects you find in your object detection that we set up in our previous tutorials. So just as a heads up, if you're new here or haven't been following along, this is a part of another entry of my tutorial series of TensorFlow 2 object detection. So I'm going to be using the same environment and project that we've been using in the past three videos. So I'd recommend go checking those out if you're new, but otherwise you can still follow along and maybe use it for your project. Okay, so sometimes when you're doing object detection, you want to actually be able to count how many things that you found, regardless of what those things are. So like in our model training one, we were doing Legos, so maybe you want to count how many Legos you found in a picture or a video. Today I'm just going to be using the default model and labels that you kind of just get baked into the box, um, but we're just going to be looking at how we can count those. So I'm in the code that we've been using previously, and I'll put whatever I do today up on the GitHub. So I'm just in the normal detect from images.py. Um, mine might be called a little bit different just because I'm using my uh, successor or who I got the inspiration from and I'm kind of building up on it. Um, so we're just going to make some easy, quick edits to what we need to do. So you can see still kind of our normal mess here. And I'm actually going to copy over some code I've already prepared. So the way we're going to count our objects is that we're going to edit the run inference function which is right above our little if name equals main. And within this run inference, we want to be able to see like what object we're looking at and we want to add it to a list. So I'm actually just going to do a cheeky little copy paste into here because <laughs> I already have our, uh, I already kind of prepared it for us. So let me pop it in here and I'll explain what's going on. So I created three new variables and just a heads up whatever I'm doing here feel free to completely change and fit to do whatever your needs require this was kind of more just an exploratory thing and show you how that you can pull this data in what I'm just going to do is just print the data and show it to you but maybe you need to do something else with it like put it on the screen and create a new label or send an email or save it to a file whatever but this is just going to show you how to actually get that data so to start I just have these three variables here I have a threshold, which is just kind of if we want to check to see if the thing we're detecting is really the thing that we want, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's kind of like the confidence level. Um, if we go to like our sample outputs, so these are the kind of outputs that we had from our previous videos. Uh, if I can scroll in a little bit here, you can see that every detection gets a confidence level. So this dog, it's 75% sure this is a dog, 81% sure about this one. It's only 54% sure it's a person over here. So most people generally go for that 50% confidence as that's generally a pretty good rule of thumb. Um, you can play with that too. If you want to be like really specific or really confident with it, you can turn it up. So if you turned it up to 75%, you actually wouldn't get this dog just because it cuts it at 75, but you would get this dog, but you wouldn't get this person. If that makes sense. And we can look at our other pictures here. So you can see these people are all different levels of confidence. Same with these kites. So play around with the confidence level for your needs. And this one's way too small, <laughs> but I'm sure that one's only semi-confident. So I'm just using 50%. Um, and again, for my setup, I'm just using a dictionary for our found objects. So I'm going to record what type of object we found and then kind of count how many. Um, I also have an object count for our total for each picture. Not necessary, but I just thought it's a little bit nice to look at. So for our actual kind of loop here, again, we're inside the run inference, and then we're underneath the each image. So this loop right here is going through each image that we're looping, that we have like in our folder. Um, so for each image that we're inference, inferring on, because we see right here, we're running the inference for a single image. Uh, so in this for loop, we're going to enumerate through our output dictionary on the detection boxes. So you can see here it's highlighted. The output dictionary is what's returned from the uh, run inference for a single image. So we want to just take the data from that and go through it. Uh, really what we need here is X, but since this dictionary has uh, multiple sets of values, we just need to pull out these uh, values also. We're not gonna use these, but uh, otherwise this, func this for, sorry, for loop isn't gonna work because it needs to have all the values unpacked. Uh, so in here, we're just checking to see if this output detection, if the detection score of the current one we're on, the X, is greater than our threshold, 
in this case 50%, 0.5, then we're gonna say that the current label or object in this case that we're looking at is our category index. And this category index is our label map. So if we go down here to our uh, command line arguments, you're gonna see that when we pass in the label map, which is what we've done in the previous videos, we pass in this label map, uh, this category index is set to this label map because label map, another function is called that kind of like uh, formats it. So this category index has all of our labels in it. So again, you can do this if you're using your own model, as long as you set it up the same way. Uh, so we're gonna say category index output dictionary. We're gonna take the detection classes of the current one that we're looking at, the current uh, detection box, and then the name of that label. So it looks a little complicated as it's like a three layer <laughs> dictionary here, but that'll get us the current name. So what we're gonna do next is that we're just gonna check to see if the label we're currently on already exists as an entry in our found objects dictionary. So if it does exist, we're just gonna add one to it. So in the dictionary found objects, maybe we're looking at an apple. So apple in found objects just gets added to one. Otherwise, if it doesn't exist yet, doing this will create the key, but we just wanna make it equal to one. Because if it's the first time, we just wanna add, we just wanna set it to one. We don't wanna add one, if because if you try to add one to it when you just make it, it's not gonna work. So that's why in case it doesn't already exist, make it, just set it to one, and then the next time it finds one again, it'll hit this one instead. And then at the bottom, we just set that object count plus equal one, just so we can count the total number of objects. And I'm doing this per image. If you wanted to do this for all images, you could just move these up top here and move it outside of the four for each image. Because right now, this, these are gonna reset for every image. So we're just gonna look at each individual image, but if you wanna count for all groups of images, just put these right above that for loop. And then we're just doing some fancy printing. So we're just gonna see the total objects found in the current picture we're looking at. This eye path is just the, uh, the path to the photo. So that'll get us the name. And then we're just gonna print the total amount of objects we found in that photo. And then under here, we're just printing that dictionary. So that's gonna show us each label or each object type and how many we found of each. Nice. <laughs> so well, uh, let's run this. I'm just gonna use our default command that we have been using. I'm gonna grab this. Again, this should already be in our previous uh, files. And again, I'll have it. So we're just running this script. We're using the default uh, model that we used in our original tutorial. Say again with the default labels and we're going to our test images folder. And that for me is just, again, those default test images that we're given. All right, let's run this. And again, it's gonna take a second, but we should see some fun data show up here in a moment. It'll give us the, you can already kind of see a sneak peek <laughs> of some previous runs I've done. Um, and you can do this on video too, FYI. Uh, you might have to format it a little differently about where you read things or maybe where you print them, but you can do it just like this. But again, we're just doing it for images today. And all right, so we can see total objects found in test images, image one, three. So there were two dogs and one person. So let's go verify that. We're gonna go to our outputs. And yep, you can see, I know these look the same before, but these get overwritten every time. Uh, so, yep, so two dogs and one person, that checks out. Uh, our second one, we have, uh, sorry, image two. There was 13, eight people and five kites. That sounds right, I don't know if I wanna count everybody. Uh, yeah, I'd probably count that, right? And some of these are gonna be kind of over labeled on top of each other, which may be a reason it's a little bit hard to see. It's like for kites, one, two, three, four, and again, there's actually two kites. Back there, you can see two boxes. So yep, that's five kites. Um, and again, if you didn't want like the uncertainty of these as like, you know, this one over here is a pretty low percentage kite. And some of these people like this one over here, if you didn't want to count those, you can always change that threshold limit you have. Um, if you're not, if you don't want those low confidence scores. And then again, for the third one, we only found one, we found one person. 
and that makes sense. This model must not have nails and stuff in it, so we only have the hand, which is fine for this demonstration. And so yeah, that's basically it. That's all it takes to just take a simple tally count <laughs> of everything that we found. Uh, you know, I hope that you find that useful and that you can make some cool things built off of that. Because I know sometimes half the problem is just knowing how to start. So I thought I'd share this cool little find. But anyways, if you have any other suggestions or things you want to see in future videos, please feel free to let me know. I actually came up with this idea from another viewer recommendation. So I'm always open to ideas. But if you liked it, please leave a like. Helps me a lot. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.